have a winter festival with lights. We better do something. They light candles. They put them on trees. We got nothing. It's horrendous. The churches are cold. They're dark. The people have nothing to look forward to. We better come up with a myth. So they came up with the myth of December 25th. They came up with the lights, and there it is. Now, you, you think I made that up. Go and check it out. If you're offended, I'm sorry, but reality is sometimes offensive. But that's the reality of the invention of Christmas. That doesn't invalidate the whole concept of Christmas, but it does create a little reality for you, and it may be part of the reason is you feel disconnected from reality during the Christmas holiday because you are disconnected from reality. Then, of course, there's the, the spending insanity. This is similar to, I mean, it's, it's grotesque, the spending insanity, the conspicuous consumption, the stupidity of walking in a department store and buying crap that you don't really need. I mean, I did. I bought, my, I bought myself a pair of gloves last week, even though I have three pairs I don't even wear. I felt like buying myself a, a gift, so I bought a new pair of driving gloves. Then I got them in the car, and I realized that they're too thin. They're nice. They look great. But I'd rather stick with the gloves that I have that are thicker with a lining for, for driving. So I put the other gloves. I don't know where to put them under the Christmas tree. I'll give them away to a bum some, someday. You buy things you don't even need. It's part of the, of the holiday uh, um, tradition, spending like a, like a drunk sailor, even though dr there are no drunk sailors anymore. They're driven out of the Navy. Maybe we need some drunk sailors to kill the enemy. I don't know, but that's a separate story. Maybe that's what would do the trick is get some drunk sailors to, you know, fire some tomahawk missiles at some training camps in the Middle East. That might that might just be the trick that we need. Uh, if we had enough drunk sailors raiding the uh, munitions rooms or the, the command centers in their ships and firing missiles at the enemies in the Middle East, I wonder what would happen if they actually did it autonomously. But anyway, that's just a thought. When I was an anthropologist, as I said earlier, I meant to stay on that track talking about these grotesque spending habits of ours during the holidays, I studied the, the, uh, the uh, New, Gu New Guinea Highlanders. And a strange thing happens once a year. They raise pigs all year. They fatten them up all year. And then on one day, they go crazy. To us, they go crazy. They have a gigantic pig slaughter. They kill every pig in the village, virtually every pig. And they gorge on pork. Uh, don't tell the Muslims about that because they're liable to try to introduce Sharia law. And let me tell you something about New Guinea Highlanders. Uh, if any Muslim goes up into the Sepik River region, even today, and tries to convert them to Islam and tells them not to eat pork, they'll wind up being long pig themselves, if you know what I'm saying. But the thing is, they did the same thing we do. They have this gigantic orgy of spending. Same thing as we do. We have this orgy of spending. It's a, it's a kind of letting of the blood is what the spending really is. So don't be ashamed. In fact, I'd recommend you go out and spend more. You might feel better. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O. Well, as we come to the end of Hour 2, I have another announcement to make for those of you who are lucky enough to have the show for a third hour. The inspirational piece that we played from YouTube that was put together by the listener, Michael Sestak, will be played in the next hour. So if you haven't heard it, you're going to hear it, and we're going to talk about inspiration. But the main question is, what do you fear Obama's going to do before he leaves office because uh, of the fact that he has absolute power right now with no one stopping him at any turn? He is going to bring in more Muslims in the next year than I care to tell you about. You say, well, what's wrong with that? Oh, really? What's wrong with that? In a time of terror, you bring in Muslims? Just on the face of it, does that make sense to you? Let, let's put aside the issues of racism, fears of racism, the specter of racism. Why would you bring in practitioners of a religion amongst whom there are too many practitioners of terrorism? Is that clear enough for you? Now, don't tell me about the, the David Duke, please. And don't bring him up again. They're, they're, they're gone. They're not plotting to blow up a school. Why would you bring more of them in? Where is the mystery answer to this question? Okay. Now, I want to go back to Mithraism because you're going to look it up on your own tonight. It's part of the final exam, which is going to be given next week before Christmas Eve. Remember I told you that Mithras, Mithras, the Persian god Mithra, which was adapted into Greek as Mithras, which was a mystery religion practiced in the Roman Empire. 
from about the first to fourth centuries A.D., and it competed with early Christianity, and it grew tremendously into the, amongst the Persians, and known amongst historians as Mithraism. I want you to look it up over the, over the weekend and study it, because it's going to be on your final exam on the Savage Nation. And there's reasons for it. The reasons are because I want you to be an educated person so you don't simply live in the two doxies of Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal. Maybe if you opened your mind, maybe if you opened your mind and blew the circuits and went beyond the reasonable part of the brain, went outside the reason without medication, you might open up your brain to the waves that are sweeping over America outside of the forces of our mind. That's not bad, may I do late night radio. I don't know, one day when I leave talk radio, I may do a religious radio on the internet. Maybe I'll have fun doing that. Maybe you'll hear the real prophet come out. Because God sees the truth but waits, and God's hand is behind everything that's ever happened in my life. Everything in my life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've seen God's hand. Hand or hands, it doesn't matter whether he did it with one hand or two hands or 20 hands. There's certainly a greater power than I. That's that's all I want to say to you, and it's not you. <laughs> oh, the mysteries of Mithras. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. With such deceit and such hatred roiling the nation, black against white, white against black, gay against straight, straight against gay, Christian against Muslim, Muslim against Christian, Muslim against Jew, Muslim against Hindu, straight against gay, tall against short, smart against stupid, stupid against smart. It's not, it's not, there's no cynicism in it. It doesn't work anymore. It can never play today with this age. The drug children, they wouldn't listen to that. Let's try one more from another era. Johnny and Joe over the mountain and across the sea. It's so sweet that I think it wouldn't even make it out of the starting gate today. Let's listen to this uh, piece, Over the Mountain and Across the Sea by Johnny and Joe. The United States of America today in an age of such dissension and hatred. I guess, I guess the young still find each other, get married, and dream of a future, and try to build a family. Oh, well, let's move on. Nothing to see here. So today we've talked about Obama. Uh, the power mad president. I compared him to uh, Mao Zedong. He's showing all the signs of a psychopath. He's gotten everything that he's wanted and then some. I called him Obama Mao for the third or fourth time. I gave you a brief history of Mao Zedong, and I talked about just as Mao has destroyed symbols of China, Obama is destroying symbols of America. I read from Government Zero. I said we do not have a party to represent us. I talked about the Democrat Party, the Republican Party, uh, phrases I coined in 94. And I said, you have to look at the overall picture of Mao and Obama to understand what I'm saying, which is that Obama has almost absolute power right now. And I asked you, what do you fear he's going to do in the time that remains? And I talked about how he could keep power. I talked about a false flag event. I talked about a false flag event just before the elections uh, and how he says that we need 90 days to straighten out the power grid. We cannot have an election in November because the power grid has gone down in too many segments of America where so many minorities exist. Their votes won't be counted. And therefore, we absolutely have to delay the election at least 90 days, during which time I will have temporary power uh, to retain the presidency under Article 43,974,000 written by myself, Nancy Pelosi, and Paul Ryan in the middle of the night in a toilet somewhere in Washington. And under that rule, written by ourselves, uh, while high on our power, we have decreed there will be no elections in November of 2016, and I will retain power temporarily now. This is not a power grab by any means. This is an attempt to avoid a power grab by a demonic individual, he would say. In order to avoid further chaos, in order to avoid further terror, we're going to suspend uh, elections until, well, March of 2017 just going to change it because I am Barack Obama. See you going on vacation right now. We have a date in uh, Vail, Colorado for an early spring ski vacation. 
Okay, so that's what we talked about. But now we're not going to talk about that. No, we're through talking about that. We're going to talk about other stuff. We're going to talk about inspiration. So let's go to Annette on WMAL in Washington. Annette, what's on your mind? Uh, I just want to commend you because uh, I'm a, a new listener to your program. And I was coming home from work because I got off early today. And uh, I was saying, Lord, this man's got to be saved because you were hitting nails on the head. My, I'm an end-time judgment prophetess, and I'm hooked up with a few other people in the country. And whoa, 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 hold it. You got my attention. An anti-judgment prophetess? Time. Please, wait, hold Last ma'am, I'm, I, you, you lost me. You, what do you mean by anti-judgment prophetess? E-N-D, time. In the end times, there will be what? Uh, we're in the last days. But again, that which you spoke, and you just briefly went through it again, I have been prophesying from day one when I first laid eyes on this president. The Lord showed me he was a vessel used to bring this country to total financial disaster. But coming down the line, as you have said, what would be our worst fears that he would stay in office? It's going to happen. The Lord showed me a disaster is coming to the country. I've been warning people for two years that this was going to happen, and he was not going to leave the office. And that's why I said, this man got to be saved because you were prophesying. And again, myself and others well, around the country. My, my dear new listener, how do you know I haven't already been saved? I heard uh, the little monologue uh, where you were speaking about God, and I said, well, you got to be saved. <laughs> yeah, but I've been saved. Honey, I've been saved a long time ago. I was saved when I was born. I was saved. No, again, I've only heard now. I think this is the third time I've heard your program. No, I don't mean I was saved in the Christian sense, but I've been saved as a soul many times in my life, uh, is what I'm saying to you, Annette. I've had brushes, even as a child, and I know that I... Sometimes thought I actually died. Sometimes I imagine that I actually did die, and this is all a dream. Did you ever have any of those thoughts? Yes. And again, I want to also interject that. Well, well, well no, no. I want to have a dialogue with you. Since you are a prophetess, have you ever had the thoughts in that that this is all a dream? No. I know for that. I know that I know because I'm one of the people, as you mentioned earlier, about the artists who actually seen the image of Christ come to them. I've seen Jesus face to face many times. I've been to paradise. So I know that I know that I know that which came out of your... Uh, look, all, right, all I can say is I'm glad to have you as a listener. I need a, as many prophetesses as I can have uh, a, at any one time. And that would you accept a Christmas gift from me, a copy of my best-selling book, Government Zero? I hope you will because it's going out to you if you'll stay on the line and give us your address. Maybe you can share it with fellow prophetesses and prophets, because the book is quite prophetic, and it will profit you to read such a prophetic book. Peter Piper picked a pack of prophetic peppers. <laughs> Sorry. All right, without further ado, I have a, a very, very big treat for you out there in Radio Land. One of my listeners, who I don't know, Michael Sestak, heard my show of December 15th, where I was talking about inspiration. He set some music to it. And the music comes from The Last Samurai, I am told. It's only a few minutes long, and it struck a, a chord. And I believe it's now up on michaelsavage.com if you want to enjoy it over the weekend. But you're going to hear it right now on The Savage Nation. I intend to make this day forward the first day of the rest of my life. We can change our lives. You say, well, what's wrong with your life, Michael? Well, it's not that there's anything wrong with my life, but it's not what I want it to be. I don't feel that I'm inspiring people in the way I want to inspire them. You see, you can inspire through hate. You can inspire through love, hope, humor, the positives. I look at the history of the world, and I look at the world today. And I realize that if we don't inspire each other through positive attributes, love, hope, and humor, we're going to descend into the barbarism of the left and the barbarism of ISIS. You like me to be hard. You like me to be tough. You like me to give you the breaking news. You like me to be cynical. You like me to be analytical. You like me to give you stuff that you don't hear anyone else. I get that. But there's a limit to that. 
there's a lot of area beyond all of that. I think of Christmas. 